Alrighty, what is up guys and welcome back. As I said in the previous video, I'm working on that boost cut thingy majiggy. So I got a little bit more thinking done on that and I think what I'm gonna do, because the way I wired this, my PCM relay is wired separately than my injector and ignition circuits. So I think I might just wire that to cut the PCM off. So I do have one main relay going to my injector circuit and my ignition circuit. So there was some concerns and questions about if I would just cut ignition and I was still dumping fuel, possibly hydro locking the engine. But I do have those technically on the same circuit right now, so I would just be able to cut them both off. I'd be able to cut fuel and ignition, but I think what I might do is just cut the PCM off, which would stop both. So the way I have this thing wired right now to the fuse box, like I have it wired in pretty well, you can't even really tell that it's there, but that yellow wire uh, is a is a positive that goes to the relay. So that's like goes to the main relay and that's passing power through to this little fuse box that's underneath there and there's five circuits on that fuse box that I'm using uh, and that's what powers the injectors and the coils and everything like that. So if I wanted to, I could just have that um, cut off this thing, which would cut off the fuel and the ignition, uh, but I also have a separate PCM power relay, which I might just cut that off. So either way, what I think I'm going to do, guys, is cut off either PCM power, just have the whole thing die, and, or I could do injector and ignition at the same time and not have to worry about the hydro locking or anything like that. I don't think it would do that, but I wanted to address it. I think I'm just going to do the... PCM power. So here's what I got going on today. Uh, I think the way that I want to run this thing is this is the existing vacuum port that was going down to the pressure regulator and I'm just using a little tiny piece of 3 8 hose there and a 90 and this is like a, a quarter inch NPT down to an eighth inch NPT and then I have the pressure sensor sitting right here. So this thing is pretty much sitting nice and sweet here. This switch, I'm going to unscrew this thing and we'll talk about it a little bit. It has this little boot on it to protect the wiring and cover some junk up. So that thing's kind of cool. What I need to do first before I can test any of this stuff is develop a circuit that I can completely close off. So basically I need to build a boost leak tester. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to build a boost leak tester. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Alrighty. So this might seem like super, super basic guys, but all I'm going to be doing for this is using a four inch 90 degree silicone elbow that I already had from when I was trying to set this stuff up before. So this is what I wanted to use originally before I went turbo and I believe I had this thing on like going to my MAF sensor or something or that was the original plan with it. So I already had this laying around. I picked up two large hose clamps. Um, can never have enough hose clamps. So these are pretty cheap. This was free. I mean, I already had it basically. I picked up some new air fittings. I have a bunch of these, but I got some more anyways. This is like six bucks. So if you didn't have it, I guess that's what I'm trying to show you guys. If you didn't have it, this would be how to build it. So that was like six bucks. And these were like $3 a piece. So this is just some uh, PVC piping. This is gonna go together. One of these fittings is gonna go into here to hook an airline up to. This is gonna go in here and then I will show you exactly where the magic happens. All right guys, so here's what I got next. So that four inch 90 goes right on the end of the turbo. So this is gonna come up. These are nice and tight already. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some, some uh, Teflon, just Teflon tape around that to seal it up. Put this thing down, I'm going to put that fitting in the top of there, and then we should be able to use the compressor, apply pressure into here, and then pressurize this whole circuit. And that will help us with, one, checking for boost leaks, and two, verifying that this thing actually works. 
Okay, so we're gonna get going on this thing. This is a quarter inch NPT. I don't have a quarter inch NPT tap, however. Uh, I do have a half inch NPT tap that I use for some other stuff. And that's what I'll be using for this. But luckily, I do have a half inch to quarter inch NPT reducer here that I'm gonna pull out of this little thingy majiggy. Always cool having stuff laying around, guys. And this thing, uh, kind of an interesting project that I use this for. I use this in my uh, engine runs on drain cleaner video. So I basically made hydrogen from drain cleaner and ran a lawnmower engine on it for like three minutes. So that's what I had all these fittings from. I also made a torch using the same thing, a drain cleaner, uh, a torch, like with a flame like this big and you can like cut stuff with it. But yeah, pretty cool. I ran an engine on drain cleaner with this thing and now I'm gonna use it for uh, a boost leak tester. Uh, I'll, I'll put the video in the, up over here in the suggested. So this thing should work. Put this in there, I'll tap it out. Tap, tap, tap a roo and then we'll be good to go. All right guys, so here it is, pretty much all finished up now. So just did the half inch NPT tap, uh, half inch to quarter inch reducer, pipe threaded the crap out of it, pipe threaded this. Um, these things still like to leak even though you do have a bunch of thread on there. And what is really funny about these parts that I bought, I just realized that I have like all of the same parts sitting here for something else that I already built. So this is actually a bubbler for a different hydrogen generator I made a while back, but it's the exact same parts, I didn't even realize it. So I'm gonna hook an airline up to this thing for now, and or right now, and we'll test it and see how it does, if it leaks. If it does leak, I'm not really that concerned about it, as long as I can identify that it's leaking from this section or the top. If it's leaking from here, I'm not worried about it. Basically anything after the turbo, if it's leaking, that would be a boost leak because this is just a fabulous piece of garbage that we made. Alrighty guys, well, I got some more wonderful news. So this uh, fitting that I had here, that I had the little doohickey hanging on, as you can see it's gone now. So <clears throat> I tried pulling that thing off and it snapped it off. So we're gonna, we're gonna go for broke here and pretty much nothing we can do at this point, but what we're gonna try to do is instead of doing the 90 degree thing that I had up there, I'm just gonna try to thread this thing right into the intake just like this. So I, I, I kinda in a way actually wanted to do this before because there's all these little plugs here. I really wanted to do this, but I didn't really feel like doing it. So I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> now, now that's what I'm gonna do. All right guys, check it out. What we end up with is a, a nice little switch underneath here that's pretty much completely buried by the wiring that I had. I'll go from this side. So I did slap some RTV around there. That thing is like in there nice, completely buried, nice and tight. And I'm just gonna use these little fittings here because I don't have 25 hands or a cameraman. So that's gonna be hooked to the multimeter with the continuity buzzer on. You hear when I turn this on, it buzzes. So what I'm going to do is hook up the line for the boost leak tester. And you can see it's around 20 PSI right now. So we have continuity there, which means that the switch is closed. So I'm gonna try to set this around like maybe 18 PSI. Now I'm going to try to get in here with the... This is like almost impossible to do with one hand before I run out of air pressure. So 
So I'm going to turn this thing down a little bit. And you can see we don't have you don't have continuity now, no buzzer on. Alright, so I got this thing all hooked up and I have it on the multimeter with the continuity buzzer and I got the gauge pretty much set and I, I don't know if I like how this is responding. So I'm gonna put this in, it's gonna beep. We'll see here that we'll we'll hear the buzzer, continuity buzzer, meaning that it's normally closed. It has contact and when I add pressure it'll stop beeping. But if we watch the gauge, I'm going to go up kind of fast, we'll go to 20. So like that's 20 PSI and it stops so it would be open and it would kill the PCM. Watch when I go back down, it doesn't start beeping again for quite a while and it's like really intermittent if it wants to come back on or not which it's bleeding pressure, so that might make sense. But you hear it kind of like sputtering, whatever. So now I'm gonna go up like super fast, as fast as I can. I'll just go as high as I can. So that was like 20 PSI and you can hear it like hesitated for a couple seconds before it shut off. So I don't know if I like that. I don't know if it's responding fast enough. So it's like getting up to 20 PSI, but it'll actually shut off at like 18 PSI. So I'll go up slow. So that's like 10 PSI right now and it's off. So I'll try that again. I'll go really slow with it. So I think it, it works. It's just not responding very fast. So if it were like a f wide open throttle full boost situation and that line broke, it would like skyrocket before I think this is going to react to it. All right, so there we have it's closed now. Vehicle would be running. Go slow. So there it shuts off at like 10 PSI. But I can take this thing when it turns back on. And it responds very, very slow. It makes contact again. So I'm gonna jam this thing up to 20. Really quick. And it shuts off and that was only like probably 17 PSI. So I just don't know if this is going to respond and work fast enough. The good news is I uh, got the boost leak tester all done and that was in and I didn't really have any leaks anywhere. And the only place that I could really feel any air was coming out of where my boost controller was on the relief side that should be leaking. I'm, that was pretty much the only place that was leaking so the boost leak check went well. Nothing is actually leaking. That was a win, I think. So the not so much of a win was this little switch. Cool idea, it might work with a different switch, um, but I'm not gonna use that switch. I, I'm not gonna bank on that to protect the engine for anything. So it seems like it's working, it's working properly. It was kind of hard to adjust and very finicky, but it seemed like it's reacting very, very slow. So as you saw in the video, I would crank it up and then it would finally shut off and then I'd turn it all the way back down it would bleed off the pressure and then it would sit there and kind of be like intermittent on and off like it was making its mind up if it was gonna close that circuit or not so I don't think the diaphragm in that thing is working fast like I wanted it to work um, but it was only like a five dollar switch so I'm not really too worried about it so we'll keep thinking we'll figure something else out the concept is alive we just got to figure out something that's gonna work that's it for now thanks for watching have a good one Oh, 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 oh,